Hello everyone, welcome to another session of Financial Management Revision Series for CA Intermediate November 2023 attempt. And we are going to uh, continue with our discussion on investment decisions and the capital budgeting or capital budgeting one and the same thing. The first part is already there. So hit the like button, share with all your friends. These lectures are going to be really useful for the examination purpose because the small points that we are focusing on in these lectures that will definitely play a significant role in uh, while attempting the questions in the examination. That is my promise to you. Okay, so in the last lecture, we were discussing about the non-time adjusted techniques and the time adjusted techniques. And I told you what are the time adjusted techniques, right? How we have to calculate the present value of the future cash flows, whether it is inflows and in the future, the cash outflows can also be there, sir. It is not necessary that the cash outflows has to be all the cash outflows has to be at the zero period. No, it is not necessary, sir. Some of the cash outflows might be at some other period. So you have to calculate the present value of that. So regarding the techniques, uh, we discussed about uh, two time adjusted techniques. One was the ARR, another one was the payback period. Now the third technique is the discounted payback period. This discounted payback period is quite similar to payback period. The basic fundamental is the same as with the payback period. The only difference is to calculate the present values, right? The only uh, difference between payback period and the discounted payback period is that discounted payback uh, period considers the time value of money. It is a time adjusted technique. So let's try to understand how to uh, calculate the discounted payback period with the help of an example, right? Uh, so this example is for discounted payback period discounted payback period right uh, let's take an example let's say the initial investment that is at zero period is five lakh rupees rupees five lakh uh, discount rate is given to you as 10 percent then you have uh, year one year two year three and year four right year one year two year three year four what you are given is you are given the cfat the cfat is given to you as one lakh rupees two lakh then three lakh and four lakh now these are unequal cash flows and in the case of payback period we have already discussed how to treat the unequal cash flows Right. In that case, we calculate cumulative CFAT. But here, before we calculate cumulative CFAT, we will calculate the present value of the CFAT. Right. So we will multiply this with the present value factor. Right. Of the whichever year of one year, two year, one, two, three and fourth year at 10 percent. So what will be how to calculate the present value factor at 10 percent of the first year? That is one divided by one point. 1 0 that will come to 0 0.909 this will come to 0 0.826 0 0.751 and 0 0.683 right this is the present value factor of rupee 1 for the respective year at 10 percent okay so multiplying it what we will get is we'll get the present value of cfat Right, that comes to 90,900. 2 lakh into this, that comes to 1 lakh 65,200. Next comes to 2 lakh 25,300. Next comes to 2 lakh 73,200. So, this is the present value. This multiplied by this equal to this. Multiplied by this equal to this. Now, now we will calculate the cumulative CFAT from the present value. From here, we will calculate cumulative CFAT. Right? This will come to 90,900. The second will come to 1,65,000 plus 90,900. That is 2,56,100. The next one is 2,25,300 plus 2,56,100. That comes to 4 lakh. 81,400 the next comes to plus 2,73,200 that is 7,54,600 right now this is the cumulative CFAT now how much amount you want to recover sir you want to recover this 5 lakh where will this 5 lakh fall sir 
this 5 lakh recovery will fall somewhere here. You want to recover 5 lakh rupees. That is, it is more than 3 years and less than 4 years. So, how to calculate the discounted payback period? Discounted payback period, that is 3 years. Plus, what is the remaining amount? Out of 5 lakh rupees, what is the amount that you have already recovered? You have recovered 4 lakh 81,400. 4 lakh 81,400 divided by the remaining amount you will recover from where sir you will recover from this present value not the cumulative value right the present value of the CFAT of the respective year of the next year that is from 2 lakh 73,200 solving this you will get 3.068 years right this will be the answer and this is how the discounted payback period is to be calculated. So this was all about the discounted payback period. Coming to the next technique, the very, very, very important technique that is net present value. Net present value, sir, very simple technique. Net present value is what? Net present value is the present value of all the cash inflows minus the present value of cash outflows. That is sum of present value of cash inflows minus sum of present value of cash outflows. What is the net benefit that you will be earning from a project? If this is greater than uh, zero, you can accept the project depending upon the nature of the project, whether it is mutually exclusive or if it is a mutually exclusive project, then the project which is giving you the highest NPV will be selected. If it is an independent project, then all the projects with the positive NPV can be selected, right? So NPV tells us what is the net benefit from a project that we will be getting, right? How to calculate the present value of the cash inflows, sir? You will have to prepare a statement of CFAT. Let's see. So this is how the present value of the cash outflows will be calculated, sir. We have already discussed this table of uh, cash outflows. The only difference is here now you will take purchase price of the machinery what is the year at which this transaction is taking place at zero period at zero period i told you the present value factor will always be one what is the total amount this present value factor multiplied by amount will give you the present value similarly freight carriage installation expenses worker training subsidy from the government it it will be in the year of receipt and in the year of receipt, you have to take the present value factor of that particular year in which you are receiving the subsidy. It is not necessary that you will receive at the zero period. Working capital, it may be required at the first period, it may be required at the second period, third period, right? Accordingly, you have to take the present value factor, right? Additional equipment retrenchment, total outflows. So this will be this will be what this will be the sum of present value of cash outflows this will be the sum total of present value of cash inflows similarly the statement of cash inflows the cfat statement this is what the cfat statement that we have already discussed right till this till we have discussed uh, till the total cfat now what will you do sir you will calculate the present value of the CFAT. Present value of CFAT and the sum total of it will be present value of cash inflows. Right? Rest is all dependent upon the question. The question will revolve around this part only. This is how you will have to prepare. You can prepare the CFAT statement. You prepare the cash outflow statement. Then the sum of present value of cash inflows minus the outflows right a few important things that you need to remember the rest is all question practice based on npv right important things to be kept in mind ignore depreciation and taxation if the question is silent as to tax or specifically mentions not to consider the tax sir uh, in the last lecture i told you that depreciation the main role of depreciation is just 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 tax saving so if the question is silent as to tax do not assume any tax Secondly, if the question specifically says that you have to ignore tax, then also ignore depreciation and tax both. If nothing is mentioned, the straight line method of depreciation is generally used. WDV is not normally used. Subsidy from government should be deducted from the cost of capital while calculating depreciation. This point I have already explained. 
same amount of working capital this also i have explained now one small point here listen to it very carefully one small point related to the sale of an asset here i told you that if there is a profit if there is a profit on the sale of an asset you will have to pay tax on that one small point regarding this if the question says if the question says ignore ignore capital gain tax ignore capital gain tax then what will happen sir in that case this transaction will not place this value will be recorded this value will be recorded the cash inflow but the taxation part on the profit that will not be considered so please read the question carefully if the question has specifically mentioned that you have to ignore the capital gain tax in that case do not pay do not consider this transaction of outflow the tax on the profit please do not consider it this also the tax saving also do not consider it only consider is the salvage value that is whatever is the actual cash inflow by selling the asset that's it that is what you have to consider the profit or the loss and the tax treatment on that profit or loss that is to be ignored if the capital gain tax is to be ignored sir clear i hope this much is clear sir so this is regarding the npv npv is simple very simple sir sir but when you will try the questions you will find oh sir actual real npv lies in the question the concept of npv is simple right there is nothing much in the concept of npv the thing is how to tackle the questions that we have already discussed in the financial management ici study mat series i have there i have explained in a good way how to tackle the questions that is the most important thing sir okay so this we are done now analyzed npv in case of unequal lives of the project let's say you are uh, considering the two projects let's say you are uh, considering two projects one second you are considering two projects one is project a and uh, one is project b right project a life is five years and project b life is eight years now what will you do sir he says calculate the npv of both the projects that fine sir we will calculate the npv let's say the npv of this project is ten thousand, and the npv of this project is let's say twenty thousand rupees twenty thousand rupees now which project to go with sir you told us that the project with the highest npv will be selected so in this case the project b is having a higher npv so we'll go with the project b sir very simple no this comparison is absolutely wrong why because this project is running for more number of years it will obviously have more cash inflows this project is going to have cash inflows for the next eight years and this is going to have for five years then how can you compare that which project is better right so in this case what we do is we calculate equivalent npv what is equivalent npv this npv divided by present value annuity factor right for five years at r percentage this is also divided by present value annuity factor what i am writing is the annuity factor i told you in the last lecture if you forget about the annuity factor go back to the last lecture the ending part listen to the last part where i told you what is present value factor the difference between the present value factor and the present value annuity factor i told you that so divided by present value factor of eight years at r percentage whatever the value you will get here what is this value this is the equivalent npv for one year this is the equivalent npv for one year right now you can compare both the projects whether to go for project a project b the whichever the project is having the higher equivalent npv go for that project sir the project having the higher equivalent npv what i am saying is the project having higher equivalent npv equivalent npv will be selected 
clear any doubts in this thing so this is another important uh, area where you see that the life of the two projects are different this is very important sir right and this this will be applicable sir very important when will this be applicable sir this will be applicable only in case of mutually exclusive projects when you have to select one project if if these are independent projects then no issue sir if both the projects are giving you the positive npv go for both the projects no issue in that this will be applicable only in case of mutually exclusive project when you have to choose either project a or project b and your decision is based on the npv right so in this case the decision will be based not on npv on the equivalent npv right this is what is there annualized annualized equivalent npv one and the same thing now another thing one uh, after npv we have one concept that is pi after uh, npv there is one concept that is known as profitability index profitability index now it says let's say there are two projects uh, there is project a and there is project b right present value of cash inflows in this case is let's say 2 lakh and present value of cash outflows is 1 lakh just a hypothetical situation to explain you and for project b is 6 lakh and 5 lakh rupees now what is the npv here npv here sir 1 lakh and 1 lakh now the problem here is the npv is same for both the projects both the projects are giving the positive npv both the projects are having the same NPV. Now, how to decide between project A and project B? I am saying both the projects are mutually exclusive projects. These are not independent projects. These are what? These are mutually exclusive projects. How to decide in this case when the NPV is same for project A and project B? In such a situation, you will use profitability index. That is PI. What is PI? PI is present value of cash inflows divided by present value of cash outflows present value of cash inflows divided by present value of cash outflows so in this case that is 2 lakh divided by 1 lakh and in this case it is 6 lakh divided by 5 lakh so this is 2 this is uh, 6 lakh divided by 5 lakh that comes to 1.2 that means for every one rupee invested, this project is giving you double the cash inflow and this project is giving you 1.2 times the cash inflow for every one rupee invested in the business. Now, which project is better, sir? Obviously, project A is better because for every one rupee, it is giving two rupees as the cash inflow. And here in the project B, you are getting for every one rupee, you are get, getting a cash inflow 1.2 rupees instead of 2 rupees so which project is better project a is better so this is the situation where the profitability index can be used instead of net present value right the most important part is the net present value please follow all the questions of the net present value that is very 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 important sir do all the questions of npv the concept is very simple you have to calculate the present value of cash inflows. You have to calculate the present value of cash outflows. The subtract, you will get the positive NPV. Negative NPV can also be there, sir. Right? So, this is regarding the profitability index. Now, regarding the IRR, no need to look at so lengthy things. IRR, I'll just take one example and explain you how to do IRR, sir. Let's talk about IRR. What is IRR? IRR is internal rate of return. The internal rate of re return says it is that percentage of the return that a business expects from the investment where the business says at least I am in a no profit, no loss situation. If not the profits, the business wants itself to be in a situation where it is uh, at least not going into the losses that is no profit no loss situation so the businessman says if i want to invest a huge amount today in the investment i want to know the minimum rate of return where i will be in a no profit no loss situation that minimum rate of return is known as irr or what we call it as the internal 
rate of return. So what will happen, sir? In case of IRR, uh, the present value of cash inflows will be equal to the present value of cash outflows. Right. And if this is the situation, what will happen with the NPV, sir? The NPV will be a big zero. NPV will be zero. How to calculate the IRR? Now, there is a trial and error method that we use for the calculation of IRR that I'm going to teach you how to calculate IRR. Let's take up an example. The small examples, the numerical example, the small examples will help you in solving the main questions also, right? If you are, even if you are doing it on your own, this will help you in understanding the concept initial cash outflow. That is rupees uh, 1 lakh, right? Cash inflows are given to you. Cash inflows year 1, year 2, year 3. What are the cash inflows? That is 1 lakh rupees. Another cash inflow is 50,000. Next cash inflow is 10,000. I say determine IRR. Determine IRR. Now, what you have to do is, IRR is where NPV should be 0. Right? Now, what we will do in the trial and error method, the very simple thing is, calculate NPV at any percentage, whatever the percentage you wish to, right? What you have to do is you have to find the rate at which one rate you will find out where the NPV is positive. One rate you will find out where the NPV is negative, right? And then you will find out the rate where the NPV will be zero, right? So let's do it. I say solution in the solution. The first I'll calculate NPV at eight, uh, 28%. Right. I want to calculate the NPV at 28%. How to calculate the NPV, sir? What is your cash inflow in the first year? 1 lakh multiplied by the present value factor of 28% for first year. That is 1 divided by 1.28. That comes to 0 0.78 plus. 50,000 multiplied by present value factor of the second year that is 0 0.61 plus third year 10,000 multiplied by 0 0.48 minus the cash outflow that is 1 lakh rupees. So calculate this value, calculate this value, this uh, NPV will come to 13,300. Now this is what? This is a positive NPV. Another NPV that you require is you require a negative NPV. What will you have to do, sir? Whether you have to increase this rate or decrease this rate, sir, you will have to increase this rate. As you increase the discounting rate, your NPV will come down. Increase the rate, NPV will come down. Increase the rate, NPV will come down. Increase the rate, NPV will come down. Right? Now, let's uh, try to increase it. What will you do, sir? Calculate the NPV, let's say at 29%, sir, will increase a little bit, sir, that's fine. Uh, if you will calculate NPV, it will come to 12,213. This will be the NPV. Sir, there is a very small uh, decrease in the NPV with 1% increase. Very small, right? That means you will have to take a higher jump. Higher jump. Okay, sir, higher jump. Let's calculate NPV at 41%. That comes to minus 380. Now you have two uh, discounting rates. One is with the positive NPV. This discounting rate with the positive NPV. And this discounting rate with a negative NPV. Right. That means your IRR will fall between 28% and 41%. Because your NPV should be zero. Right, you have to find out the discount rate at which your NPV will be zero. The zero will fall somewhere between this, sir. The zero will fall between positive 13,380. So for this, what we do, sir? We will do interpolation. What we will do is we will do interpolation. What is interpolation, sir? Interpolation says at 28%, uh, your NPV is 13,300. At 41%, your NPV is minus 380. Right? Now, what you need? You need NPV of 0. And 
IRR will fall between this. The IRR will be more than 28% but less than 41%. Right? How to calculate it? I say for a percentage change, for 13% change, what is the change in the NPV, sir? The N change in the NPV is 13,300, right? Minus, minus 380. So that comes to 13,300 plus 380. The change is 13,680. Clear? This much is clear. Now, what I'm saying is, just try to understand. I say, if I change my NPV by 13,680, what is the percentage change in the discounting rate? That is 13%. Now, if I change my NPV from 13,300 to, uh, to 0, what is the change here? If I change my NPV by 13,300, because I want to bring my NPV from 13,300 to 0, that is where the IRR is. Right? So, what will be the change? The change will be 13,300. What will be the percentage change, sir? 13 divided by 13,680 multiplied by 13,300 divided by 13,680. That is 12.64%. This will be the change. So, what will be the IRR? What will be the IRR? IRR will be 28% plus this change that is 12.64% that comes to 40.64%. This will be your IRR. This is how the IRR will be calculated. Very simple steps. Listen to it very carefully. In case of IRR, take any percentage of the NPV, uh, take any uh, discounting rate and you have to calculate the NPV at that. You need two NPV. One, a positive NPV. Second, a negative NPV. The IRR will be somewhere between the two variables. Right? One positive NPV, one negative NPV. Your IRR will be where the NPV is zero. The zero will fall between the positive and the negative values. This is a very simple mathematics. All of you have studied in the smaller classes. Isn't it? So, to calculate IRR, after that, once you have calculated the positive NPV and the negative NPV, the next step is interpolation. Interpolate this is how the interpolation will take place, right? So your IRR will come to 40.64%. If you will take some other per, uh, values instead of 28-40%, some variation in the answer can be there in case of IRR. Some variation, some variation can be there, but nothing to worry about it. So this is how the IRR will work. Clear? Now, there is one formula, sir, how do we know that after 28%, we have to take 41%, 42%, 45%, one simple thing is, sir, this is a quite a high positive value. So, bring it to bring it to a negative value, you have to take a higher jump. Secondly, there is a secret formula for it. What is that secret formula? How can you uh, calculate the approximate rate that you can take? That is 13,300 divided by this initial investment multiplied by 100 plus 28 percent. Calculate it. What it will come? It will come to 41.3 percent. So, this will give you an approximate jump. What will be the approximate rate that you can take? This will help you in this, right? So, this is one secret formula that you can use to find out what should be the jump in the percentage that you have to take to get the negative NPV. You can take 42%, 43%, anything you can take, sir. No issues in that. The IRR answer might vary a little bit. A little bit, sir. A little bit. Right? So, this is all about IRR, how to calculate the IRR. Now, coming to the last part, that is the modified internal rate of return. Now, try to understand what is this modified internal rate of return. It is similar to IRR, sir, right? It is nothing but IRR, but what is the concept of MIRR? Let's try to understand what is MIRR, modified internal rate of return. In this case, he says, let's say you are at zero period at one second. At zero period, you have a cash outflow. 
of let's say 1000 rupees right at the end of first year you will have a cash inflow of 500 at the end of second year again you will have a cash inflow of 500 at the end of third year you again you have a cash inflow of 500 he says now what you are doing with the cash inflows this is a three year project right the cash inflow that you earned at the end of the year one you have invested somewhere right you have invested somewhere for the remaining life of the project you have invested this amount in the project itself or whatever you have invested this amount for the remaining life of the project that is you have invested this 500 invested 500 for two years right so we'll try to find out that what is the value of this 500 at the end of this period at the end of the project life what will be the value of this 500 you will get a value here something some, some value here sir right uh, let's say it is 10 percent you are investing at 10 percent right so what will be the value here sir this value will be 605 right now similarly the cash inflow that you have earned here you will invest for the remaining life what is the remaining life that is one year sir right so its value will be here 550 clear sir what about this cash inflow sir you cannot invest this cash inflow is already at the end of the life of the project so this cash inflow will remain as such so what you will have at the end of the third year you will have the total cash inflows of 605 plus 550 plus 500 so this is what 1655 so this is the cash inflow at the end of year three this is what this is the cash inflow at end of year three right now if i want to calculate what i will do is i have a cash outflow now i have two things after this i have two things only sir i have a cash outflow at zero period thousand rupees and at third period i have a cash inflow of 1655 that's it i have only two things forget about year one year two because we have calculated the year one value at the year three year two value at year three right so what i have is only two values one the cash inflow at zero period and at the end of the third period, I have a cash inflow of 1655. I will calculate its present value. How to calculate the present value? If I want to calculate its present value, what I will do is I will multiply it with not the present value annuity factor. No, sir. This is the value at the end of a particular year, right? So I will multiply it with the present value factor of third year at r percentage right so i will multiply it with the present value factor of the third year at r percentage right so this this value the 1655 that you have got this is known as terminal value terminal value sir let's do an example on this Let's do an example for more clarity. Let's say initial, initial cash outflow is rupees 2200, right? Then cash inflows are there. Then you have the cash inflows year one, year two, year three. That is rupees 770, rupees uh, 968 and rupees 1331 right so he says discounting rate is 10 percent determine modified internal rate of return determine m i r r so it is similar to irr sir you have to calculate the irr but in a modified way so what will be the first step here the first step here will be to calculate the terminal value to calculate the terminal value how will you calculate terminal value sir this 770 will be invested for how many years for two years sir what is the remaining life you are earning 770 here you are earning 770 here sir it is a three year project you will invest it for one two two years right then you are earning 968 it will be invested for one year 
here no investment sir it is already at the end of the period take it as 1331 right so terminal value will be calculated as 770 being invested at the rate of 10 percent for two years plus uh, 968 being invested at 10 percent for one year plus 1331 so this value will come to uh, 3327.5 now this is what this is your cash inflow at end of third year cash inflow at end of third year or what we call it as terminal value now what is your cash outflow what is your cash outflow that is 2200 i want to calculate the irr sir i want to calculate the irr so i will calculate the npv of this i will calculate the npv of this let's say i calculate npv at the rate of 14 percent right what it will be sir what is the cash inflow that is 3327.5 multiplied by now which with, with which value i will multiply i will multiply it with the present value factor not the present value annuity factor not the sum of present value factors of three years no sir only and only the present value factor of the third year that is one divided by 1.14 equal to equal to equal to whatever the value that you will get that is 0 0.675 right minus 2200 so this npv is coming to 46 that is positive for irr i need one negative value so this is a very small positive sir I can take NPV at 15%. What will happen, sir? 15%. 3327.5 multiplied by present value factor of the third year at 15%. That is 1 divided by 1.15 equal to equal to equal to. What is the value that you are getting on the calculator is 0 0.658 minus 2200. So this will come to minus 10. Now you have to do the interpolation, interpolation between 14% and 15%, right? To get the IRR at 14%, what is the NPV, sir? 46 at 15%, what is the NPV, sir? Minus 10, right? So this IRR will fall somewhere between this, the IRR, 0, 0 NPV will fall somewhere between the positive value and the negative value right so for a change of one uh, percent what is the change here change here is 56 so if you change the npv by 56 what is the percentage change here one percent so if you change the npv by 46 that is from 46 to zero what will be the percentage change that is 46 divided by 56 that comes to 0.82 percent so uh, mirr will be how much sir 14 percent plus 0 0.82 percent that is 14.82 percent so this will be your mirr right so this is how the modified internal rate of return will be calculated and yes it is important sir can mirr be asked in the examination yes it can be asked in the examination there is no question which cannot be asked in the examination, sir. Each and everything can be asked in the, uh, in the examination. Some small things have been discussed in the ICI SM series. Some small things, the remaining, the major part of the revision we have done, sir. According to the concepts, I have discussed the small things which are required uh, to be kept in the mind while attempting the question. And those things, if you do not focus on those things, definitely it can cost you some marks definitely the last topic is capital rationing what is capital rationing he says you have uh, five independent projects not the mutually exclusive i am saying you have five independent projects which you have which you can choose but the problem here is limited funds so how will you choose sir how will you choose sir you will choose on the basis of npv which projects all you will select all those projects which are giving you the higher npv you will leave only then uh, that project which which is having the lowest npv what is the ultimate objective the ultimate objective is the increase in the wealth of the shareholders the stakeholders and that is based on the net benefit so select all the projects within the budget 
select all the projects which are having the higher NPV. Now it will depend upon whether the projects are divisible or the projects are indivisible. Divisible means the part of the project can be accepted. Indivisible means you have to accept full project. The part of the project cannot be accepted. So capital rationing is a process whereby the limited funds available are allocated among the financially viable projects which are not mutually exclusive under consideration. These are what? These are independent projects under consideration so as to maximize the wealth of the shareholders. Now there is I think one or two questions on capital rationing that is there in the ICI module. Just go through with those questions more than sufficient regarding the capital rationing because uh, capital rationing has hardly been asked in the examination. The most important topics in the capital budgeting is NPV and IRR. These two are the most important topics and uh, there are lots and lots of questions specifically on the NPV. There are lots and lots of questions. Another important point, sir. One more important point before we forget this that in case, in case uh, there is a contradiction between NPV and IRR, then how will you choose the project? Let's say there are two projects. Let's say there are uh, two projects. One is project A, another one is project B. Now project A is having the NPV of let's say 1 lakh rupees and project B is having 90,000 rupees and IRR project A is having 10%, project B is having 15% IRR. That is a higher rate of return, right? Now what will you do in this case? As per NPV, you should be going with the project A, but as per IRR, you should be going with the project B. Now there is a contradiction between the two options two projects based on the different methods in this case what you have to do is you will always have to prefer as per the npv because the npv gives you the interpretation in the absolute terms not in the percentage terms the npv gives you the absolute benefit that you are going to get from a project that is that is why npv is considered as superior to the irr clear Another important point that was required. So with this, the investment decisions or the capital budgeting is over, right? Approximately how much time we have taken, sir? More than one and a half hour, little less than two hours. Little less than two hours we have done, but we have covered all the important points on the capital budgeting. Small points related to depreciation, related to working capital, related to taxation, related to the sale of an asset. All these points will play a significant role when you will be attempting the questions, right? So uh, now rest is on your efforts. What you have to do is you have to do the ICS study mat after this. That is the most important thing because in the whole of financial management, whatever the previous years are, RTPs, MTPs, we have seen the maximum number of questions are from the ICI module. At least 70 to 80 percent part of the financial management is put from the ICI module itself, right? So that is the first and the foremost, the only thing that you have to do it right now. So with this, the capital budgeting or investment decision revision is over. In the next lecture, we will be taking up uh, leverages, very simple topic, a very small topic. So we'll take up in the next lecture, right? So see you guys in the next lecture. Till then, stay safe, stay healthy, keep studying, keep sharing. Thank you so much.